Midwest USA agents and brokers and everybody out there. How is everyone today? Good morning, Patty. Good morning. I'm a lucky gal today. I got one, two, three, four, five really good looking guys hanging out to hang out with this morning. We got Todd, Matt, Dale, Bob, and Nick, and me. Uh, this is Patty, Director of Inbound Sales here at West USA, and our friend Mike is out, so uh, I am sitting in for him today. Hope everyone had a great weekend. We are going to get rolling because we got a ton of stuff to do today. So the usual, Todd's look at numbers. You ready to go, Todd? I'm a few seconds. ready to go. All right. And Matt Baker, of course, from Home Street Mortgage is here. Hey, Matt. Hey, good morning. We're going to have to talk about your shoes when we, uh, no. when we get around to you. Three-pack, I've got a little out-of-the-box mobile apps for agents I'm going to talk about. And, of course, our fine broker, Dale, is in today. He doesn't have a mic, so we're just going to wave at him. And Bob, Bob, how are you today, Bob? Doing good? He's, he's busy watching his phone. I'm doing good. Good. All right. So, anybody's got any questions or anything about the webinar, want to check in, send us an email at webinar at westusa.com. Anytime, any place, we'll respond as soon as we can. Good morning. <laughs> that sounded just like a uh, O'Reilly segment. You know, <laughs> name a town, name a town, any place, any, but you know, it's just, it's just, sorry, I had to share that. Yeah, and I don't even have any experience doing radio. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, here we go. Well, good morning, everybody. You know, the market is continuing to heat up. Uh, you know, as you can see by the numbers, we're staying about the same days on market, somewhere around 127. The month supply, though, is continually to, uh, continuing to go down. Uh, last week, we were about 3.47 uh, months supply. Today, we're at 3.32. Uh, we'll see some indicators on that. Absorption rate sitting at about 30%. We're eating up 30% of our inventory every month. Uh, average sale price is 468,952. That's up, believe it or not, $6,000. Uh, from last month, but about a thousand over this last week. Um, sale price, average sale price is two hundred and seventy-one thousand six forty-two, and just since last week, that's actually gone up about four thousand dollars. So the market is still heating up, and usually, you know, here's a question for everybody: Why, you know, under what conditions does a, the do sale prices continue to increase like that? Well, I don't know. Please tell us. Probably when you're below four months supply, because if you're below four months supply, you're definitely without even thinking about it in a seller's market. And that's what we're seeing out there in the marketplace right now. The inventory is dropping. Uh, we're going to see. take a look at the other sheet in just a second. But continuing to move over, uh, taking a look at the average sale price to list price or list price to sale price retention. Uh, again, there's now this doesn't take into consideration seller concessions on page two of the contract. This is just the difference between the list price and the sale price. And there is another uh, term that's out there in the in, in the industry, which is sale price versus original list price. <laughs> so, you know, again, it, we're just using the list price at the time in which the contract was written um, is the way we calculate that. So, Pat, if you want to hit the button, we'll go to our, our sheet here. Highlighted are the big indicators, which we're sitting still. Armless inventory has been averaging, uh, you know, somewhere about 2,100 new listings every single week. Um, last week, we were at 2,095, so that kind of justifies that. Um, today, we're down to 18, this past week, 1,891. So it's getting more difficult, it appears, to take listings. Uh, I don't know that, that that's really necessarily the right angle today. We'll have to see how the, the uh, this continues over the next few weeks. But it could be that you know the majority of properties are already listed right now. And so people are, are already ramped up, getting ready for that you know season to sell and move their kids during the holidays, which is usually what it represents. Active inventory sitting about 22,112. Uh, um, you know, that's down from about 26,000 last month. So, you know, we're down 4,000 in inventory. We knew that was going to happen because our pendings were at sitting at around 6,000. Last month, we, we had a high of about 6,900, but we're sitting basically at about 5,800 right now. Last week, we were at 5,780. So, again, you're seeing some fluctuations. So, the inventory is being eaten up, and all these, all these numbers are indicating that. If we take a look at some of the green numbers uh, midway through the documents around the close section, um, again, you're just going to see that uh, month over month, we're averaging about 18% increase in business, but... Uh, excuse me, 31% increase in, in closed contracts, but 18% year over year. So again, we're, we're still in that double digits. We're still going there. We're eager to see what happens at the end of this month. Down at the bottom, sitting at 3.32 months supply, like we talked about 
Uh, so, Patty, you know, realistically out there, what's a buyer's agent to do? You know what? You've got to package your buyer right now. I mean, it is all about making sure that you utilize all the things that you've learned in Marge's class or that you've learned in some of the contract classes that you've taken. And if you haven't taken one lately, my recommendation would be go out and brush up on it. You know, you need three hours anyway. I hate to say it that way. But, you know, go take a contract writing class uh, about how to properly write your contract in a competitive market. Um, you know, you can be, <laughs> there's some easy things that you can do like for instance it's better to ask for a little more concession on page two and make all the check buttons buyer pay buyer pay buyer pay buyer pay because mm -hmm. then the only really you know negotiating item for the seller other than potentially personal property is probably just going to be price and concession otherwise if you sit there and it's you know concession and seller pay this and seller pay that you know I mean it, the seller has a tendency to, to look at it as though you're nickel and diamond them to death and you know I'm not saying don't hang a, tr a fair trade item out there you know something that you know that they're gonna knock off just so that you can keep your concessions but you know again just be careful the way you write your contract uh, from a listing perspective you know this it's it's the time I mean you know <laughs> Uh, you came to the clearing in the trees, you made it to the center of the forest, now every single direction you go is on the way out. <laughs> so, you know, the fact here is get in front of people who are interested in selling their home and do it now. Outside of the numbers, uh, anything advice you want to give us for coming into the summer months here in Arizona? Well, I think we're pretty much on that. I think it's, you know, the week-to-week -week thing uh, kind of helps us a little bit because we can kind of see some directions. Um, you know, again, the summer months, don't be fooled by some of the old-fashioned myths. I mean, you know, uh, people right now understand the numbers and the statistics of where they're going on. If you have not gone to your dashboard, we have a bell today. Ding. Ding. You know, if you have not gone to your dashboard, gone to the downloads tab, gone down through the downloads tab and looked at the uh, the ranking statistics uh, that tabs that we have down there, looked at the NAR home buyer and home seller report, you're missing a huge opportunity because that report tells you things like, for instance, the average seller still to this particular moment only interviews one agent and then they pull the trigger. Now that didn't mean they didn't have a friend that was referred to them plus the person they interviewed, but the fact is you just got to get your game going. Right. And, it's game on. You know, having done a ton of internet leads, I also know that the majority of people will work with the agent that responds first too. So. You want to be all over that side of it if you're doing any of that business. You know, I mean, it's, it's funny. People always say, well, you know, all of my clients usually go with me at that particular point in my presentation. Well, of course they do because at that particular point, they're your clients. Yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, if, if you if you take a look at your conversion rates and, you know, again, right at this particular moment, you, you know, you should be writing just about every listing you take. And my advice, get your air conditioning in your car geared up. It's getting hot out, folks. <laughs> It's going to be 100 this week, I heard. Oh, geez. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Thanks, Tom. That means 100 good reasons why you should be living in Arizona. Uh-huh. Exactly. Hey, so it says Mike's three-pack, but it's actually my three-pack. Uh, Mike asked me what I, what I could offer up this week, and uh, I, you know, have been messing around with my phone, finding out all kinds of fun stuff that you can do while you're on the road, and it's been quite interesting to f see really what's out there. You know, I'm, I'll, I'm not going to lie. I'm 52 years old. I fit right into that category where, you know, the phone and the texting and the internet, you know, I could, I could be really taken over by all that, but I'm getting used to it. So I'm finding some really interesting apps out there. Um, I wanted to share with you this one that I found recently called SiteGuest, which some of you are probably already have on your phone. But basically, while you're on the road, how many times have you had your clients ask you questions demographically about the area? I mean, I get stumped I all the time. Area. <laughs> I'm getting yeah. a little nervous where you were headed. <laughs> yeah. Demographics say about, you know, a certain subdivision or even the city of Phoenix to the metro area. Like if somebody said to you how many, you know, millions of people are living here, do you know the answer? Anyway, SiteGuest is one of those apps you can put on your phone and quickly find the answers. And, hey, you're, you're not expected to know everything. But it's okay if you've got some access to find out the answers. You know, so. and, and I think that's good. I think the thing that we have to realize and we have to kind of remember is that, you know, uh, based on the code of ethics and then fair housing, you know, we are uh, Article 10. We're not allowed to give, right. uh, you know, certain demographical information to clients, uh, you know, because obviously that could be interpreted as being in violation of fair housing. So you want to know what you can and what you can't. So I, my recommendation is great. Great site, Patty, great app. Um, Send it to your clients. say, hey, you know what, go look. At, it's perfect timing to go read up on Article 10. Yeah, okay. And then the second one, I, you know, I was in a class this week out in Surprise. Hey, shout out to our friends out in Surprise. Mm -hmm. I went out to Tech Tuesday and uh, told them of this app that I've had on my phone for about two years now that 
I just cannot live without. It is called Cam Scanner. If somebody oh, says to you, it. can you it. scan some documents to me and you don't have a scanner, this is the best way to do it. What it does, it's kind of like taking a picture, but it's not because you're able to kind of snap numbers of sheets or photos or whatever it is that you need to send out. It combines them all into one document, cleans it all up, and then you have the ability to, from that app to send it out immediately. It is yeah. the most awesome thing. Since sliced bread, you can get it for free. You can pay an upgrade so you're not getting all the ads. Um, a cam scanner, I believe it's there for iPhones, Androids as well. So um, it, you know, check that, that out. That one's really cool too, Patty, because they, they, have, uh, they used to have a cam scanner that used to do business cards. You know, it was oh, a card right. scanner it was called. Uh, now, the no, they don't. Well, now what they're doing is the Cam Scanner Pro, which is like four dollars and ninety nine cents. It's mm -hmm. not like it's a huge fee. Uh, app, that particular app, you just scan it, click it on the business card, and it automatically takes all the information from the business card and puts it into your contact base. Isn't that great? It's there's a, there's a ton of those which I had kind of started to do some research on. I haven't. Uh, picked one yet but that's awesome but actually i was stuck in massachusetts on that cam scanner thing and i and i wasn't able to i had my ipad with me uh -huh. and i wasn't able to get the ipad to transition a, a pdf document for me to be able to work on so i ended up having to sc take scan. a picture of it on my phone through the cam scanner yep. and then and then upload that document into eSign and then take that document and have the signatures it's a really good it. point because yeah. what it does do is it converts it into a pdf it document it's yeah. unlike Sweet. a photo where if you, you know can't always use the photos can't for everything photos. so uh yeah give that a try and then the last thing, I actually ran across this last few weeks. Um, of course, you know, I'm trying to upgrade everything on my phone, and I'm really sick and tired of the things spelling my name wrong. I'm Patty with an I. Well, this Swift Key keyboard, if you download this, this starts to recognize the things that you type all the time and the things that you say, which is amazing because it gets your habits of the way you write. And after a while, it will automatically preload the words that they think you're going to say next. And this thing, I mean it, is working like a dream. You know, we all have our own little way we, we chat or talk or type. Yeah, and so it's picking up my, my son's name. He's got a weird spelling, and so I don't have to go in there and try to correct it every time. It'll just automatically identify it. You just click on it. and it'll it, After a while, it's really starting to pick up on my, you know, writing habits, which is so cool. Plus, if you're any good at this, which I'm not, is scan, you, you're able to kind of swift move no, your fingers, swipe, yeah, swipe, swipe it. Yeah, swipe yeah, it. Yeah. I, I'm not good at that's that. That's really yet, how it but, started. So if that's really yeah. how it started. It was kind of that, that swipe if you wanted to you know, type T H E. You just kept you just yeah. put your finger on the on the keypad and just and go just back went and to the different letters and, and right. of course it learns the role of your finger. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty good. And it's great for agents because we use a lot of terms that maybe you wouldn't find in a regular, you know, texting type thing. So it's it'll recognize those terms, you know, like MLS. It'll pick it up and it'll know that it's part of, you know, you're something you're always gonna say. Uh, so anyway, very cool app. So you guys ought to try the all three of these are cool. I love this. I take some time and just go do some research on your phones and see what's out there because there's just so much you could do to make your life easier. Anybody have any others that they wanted to share that they just have to have? No. no Dale's looking at me with his eyes crossed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, here's some important news. The webinar is going to be changing as of next week from Monday to Tuesday. Same time though, right, Nick? 10 o'clock. Yep, 10 o'clock. We're just going to move it to Tuesday for uh, scheduling purposes all over through the office. So I think... Uh, it would also be good for you because it will give you time to get caught up on Monday morning uh, from doing whatever you did over the weekend. So you got some time Tuesday yeah. to tune in. Yeah, right? Remember this was uh, – this again came from the survey that we did at the end of the year, and we asked everybody, what do you think the best day of the week to have the webinar is? You know, and, and, and the overwhelming response was Tuesdays. You know, of course, that also went with a report that you know we've been looking – multiple reports, but a specific report that we picked, uh, which also had Tuesdays. It seems like everybody believes Tuesdays is the best day for office meetings. It's the best day for webinars. It's the best day for really anything in your business, uh, taking classes, any of those kinds of things. It's not Monday. I mean, that's the big thing. Even Bob has been saying, right, Bob, for years, you know, what are you doing doing it on Monday? Um, he's always recommended Tuesday. Never said that. <laughs> <laughs> Except about a thousand <laughs> times. <laughs> well, it just takes a little while for us young guys to learn that. Yeah. You know, I when mean, you get a bat, yeah. beat him over the head, got to yeah. figure it out after that amount yeah. of time. Ultimately, he was right. That's the whole point. <laughs> well, we're listening, so that's great. Tuesday it is, so don't forget next week and tell all your friends. Okay, so there is an awards gala this week, so I just wanted to let everybody know da -da 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 people are going to be getting awards, and everyone is invited. The key here is, is going to be limited space. We want you there. 
So if you're interested, you need to go. Where are we headed to we get RSVPs? It's, yep, there's a yeah. link right on there. We actually um, put a – in fact, Nick, are you going to send that out? Yeah, Nick will send that out to everybody that's in uh, radio heaven here. Um, what's going on is is Mark Cordes. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Mark Cordes. He's a uh, he's a uh, comedian, and he's been on uh, – I keep forgetting the name, but I always want to say the improv. Uh, Nick, do you remember what? Stand Up Live. There we go. Uh, he's been on Stand Up Live. I mean, you can Google some of his routines on YouTube. The guy's just hilarious. Uh, he's a professional comedian. He's going to be doing a, a comedy hour for us following uh, dinner uh, into the dessert hour there. And, uh, you know, we have all of our awards that we're giving away. We've added a number of different awards. Uh, plus, also, we have longevity awards of people that have been here 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years. Um, and then also, we have Michael Orr who's oh. going to be coming in, and he's going to be talking a little bit about what the most current, you know, we do the MLS stuff here, but Michael, if you remember, all, other than Cromper Report, he's the uh, big head honcho over at ASU Polytech Real Estate no. Department, and so he's going to share some of the, you know, more enlightening things with us for the first, uh, you know, 20 minutes or half hour. So doors open at 2.30. If you're interested, it's $49. I mean, I, I went to improv, I don't know, about three months ago, and the, uh, you know, it was like uh, 55 bucks for, me to get in, including dinner. So wow. for four, this is forty nine, including dinner and a show. And I'd pay forty nine to see Mike Orr. Your yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. if you haven't and seen, Michael oh man, if you haven't seen Mike Orr talk, he's got so much information. Yep. So wow, great, great evening. So it starts networking at two thirty. Yeah, get there two thirty. Cash okay. bar, cash you bar. Know, some oh, expos. Yeah. Bring your, bring a few bucks. Yeah. If you like to drink. But uh, awesome. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. Of course, we're going to be honoring some really great people that day too. So we're really excited, so, excited about that. Okay, we got a button problem. Ah, hello, wake up. Uh, hold on there, folks. We got another screen to go to. There we are. Uh, we have an, another event that we want to let you know about called the Women of Strength, uh, Cultivating Leadership. This is scheduled for May 13th. Uh, doors open at 8.30 in the morning. It is sponsored by... The books, the books oh, of course, I know. Ooh. So, do you have anything you share about this? It does. Yeah, I do. You know, it's not your average uh, real estate lender. So, I'm not. We're not getting up there talking about us. This is a. Um, Thank a, God. Yeah, this is an event highlighting um, women in real estate and um, really talks about you know, some some key good speakers, a, 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 a renowned poet, um, some some good stories of. of you know, women that have you know overcome some some things in their in their lives to to really leave you with um, an extra little giddy up in your step. You know, if you want to look at it that way. And th and this theme of this uh, this is our fifth um, Women of Strength event. And uh, last uh, last uh, November we had over 385 yeah, agents, almost 400 people, almost 400 people wow. in um, you know 400 agents. Mainly, Not all women. Came, not uh, 90 no, percent, point, but not all women. Yeah. Um, and we encourage anyone who's interested in coming uh, to do so. But the, this theme is the power of forgiveness. Is it? And yeah. we're going to get inspired, encouraged, and we're going to mentor and lead by the end of that there event. You go. So thank you, thank you for uh, yeah. sponsoring that. That's awesome. Well, while we're on you, hey, what else is happening? Oh gosh, you know, a, a ton of good stuff. Uh, it, you know, and I talked about um, if you can just click to the next slide. Hi, it, you know, everyone. Mike makes usually makes a joke about my beard now that we actually have uh, have it chronicled in a in an image. Um, but uh, you know, it, it's sort of a I'll call it a complicated Fed today, uh, and it's because we've got a strong dollar and weak growth, and so it's like, what do you? The Fed doesn't know really what to do. It doesn't know if they should. Um, start raising rates now or wait till later. Hey, the June's coming. Is it September? Where, you know, October. Where, where, when are rates going to go up? Because everybody, I mean, I mean, everybody knows that rates are going to go up at some point, right? They've been like pushed so far down for so long that they will come up. And so the question then comes to me, and I get this all the time. Well, what are rate? When are rates going to go up? And you know, there really is no really good answer except for soon. And I think that as the dollar and the, the growth start to, turn, you know, I think as as the growth part fixes itself, um, we're going to see rates go up. go up. They have to go up. And yeah. so as of right now, though, I mean, last week they were at four. Today you can get 3875 on a 30 year. I mean, they're still really, really low. I, I've always put this out here. I mean, the FHA race really didn't change, neither did Jumbo. But conventional, actually midweek, uh, conventional rates had touched as high as four and a quarter. 
So the last couple of, of weeks, I've talked about volatility and that like roller coaster up and down, up and down. Well, we saw that even during a week. Like I'd even have chance to come and tell you the rates had climbed up to four and a quarter before they fell back down to three, eight, <laughs> seven, five. Right. So, um, you know, just realize that there's just a lot of movement going on in the market. Uh, if you wouldn't mind the next slide and sort of to our Did You Know series. Uh, on April 14th, Fannie Mae announced that HomePath, which, by the way, everyone should have known that HomePath discontinued, um, but the term HomePath is still alive in a program called the Ready Buyer Program, which is a little funny because it's a closing cost assistance program, which I would assume you could ask Fannie Mae for closing cost assistance, yeah, you think. Uh, but you can take this educational course and you can request the closing cost assistance and I don't know if they're guaranteeing you to get 3% closing cost assistance, but um, they're implying that if you take the course, which the only funky part about it is it's prior to executing the contract. Yeah. So you're like, well, geez, after how, the fact, you yeah. know, it, it's not after the fact, it's before the, before fact. the fact. So yeah. it's a four hour course. It costs $75. I provided the link there. It's to home paths, framework, homeownership.org. And it's a four hour course and you can take it. And before you write your offer, and you can get, you know, I'm assuming you'll automatically get 3% closing cost assistance with proof of the, of the award, but um, they leave it sort of subjective, you know, in the, on their website up to 3%. So I guess it sort of depends they did this on what a long you're offering. time ago, too. They did this like, like a decade or so ago. There was another FHA program that, you know, I don't remember the name of it now, but it was something like that. And if you uh, read, you know, took the video at home, they'd give you some additional cash. And, and so it's almost like all the things that were done in the late nineties to put the, you know, get out of the SNL and the, and sure. the you know, RTC issue is what's, you know, kind of been taking place. I mean, I think the key piece here is that the first time home buyer is defined as anyone that hasn't owned a home in the last three years. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of people that could potentially benefit from that. And maybe they owned seven years ago and now they can buy, they can take advantage of this, but it's a Fannie Mae, home path, you know, so it's only for Fannie Mae REO properties, right. which as you, as you can tell Todd in your numbers every week is, is not really the strongest amount of inventory in the market. I was just going to yeah. say you go through all of the class and then you got to hope you find a house that fits. Right. Yeah. And I would well, definitely suggest yeah. that if one pops up, you go and Jump take the course it. when you're writing your right, offer, right? Right, right? Yeah. You know, and one of the sheets that we have on the, on the, uh, uh, on the, on the market stats sheet, uh, if you look on there over on the left-hand side, it says that right now lender owned and HUD are representing about two, anywhere from two tenths of a percent to two percent of the total market. So it's not yeah. very, not very much. It's not a big population, but um, from my experience, everybody wants to know what assistance is available out there, yep. whether they qualify or not. So being that, having that knowledge and being able to, you know, someone's going to read this and go, hey, I want this Fannie Mae new program, and you need to know about it, and that's what I'm here for. Something to talk about. Uh, something to talk about. So, uh, other than that, you've got our map of uh, of our, you know, where we're, where we're at, and uh, we'll see um, quite a few of you on Thursday, and uh, look forward to the, the gala. And uh, I know you're dying to talk to me about my shoes. I gotta talk to you about your shoes. Yeah, you walked so in here with the snappiest Converse All Stars on. And, and my team actually um, has seen some prototype, but, but I I gave a um, uh, a goal. And then sent it to the team that if we hit a certain metric that we would um, we would get uh, Bookspan, Baker, Team, uh, Home Street Colors, Chuck Taylors. If you know what Chuck, Chuck Taylors, Taylors are, yeah. they're Converse, yeah. uh, Converse low low ride shoes, and uh, we hit we hit our goal. Uh, and uh, in turn, I've got uh, BBT on the back and our goal on the side, and they're in our Home Street Colors and. I ordered them all. It's a little weird asking your employees to give you your, your shoe, shoe size, size. <laughs> but uh, but you know, I told uh, of, them to of a trust lot me. of the sizes, I think that was the most I, acceptable. I yeah. told them to trust me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's for good, not evil, and uh, uh -huh. and we'll go from there. So uh, so my team actually gets that today at lunch. We're doing a little lunch thing, and we're gonna get them. It's so funny, y'all oh, have to y'all have to see Maddie sitting here in, in just her normal suit and tie like he usually does, and he, and so it's it's kind of. Uh, Kind of, you know, it throws right you up, for a loop with the well, chocolate. Actually, it's right up there with the red carpet kind of stuff. There you, know? you go. There I think Nick go. just took a picture. I don't know if he's going to post it right now or not, but we'll, right. he's going to try. Gonna yeah, that's pretty well, good. Well, you're looking guys. pretty snappy. I just expect you to be dribbling in with a basketball spin <laughs> on your finger right now with, with your suit on. 
So, hey, I just want to give one shout out before we, we, we finish that talking about top production and, and our awards banquet and things of that nature. Um, you know, West USA was also recognized as the uh, company of the year for top producer, top agent uh, magazine, top producer uh, uh, in the in the Valley Place, and and this is really a huge a huge opportunity for us. I don't know, maybe some of you remember Broker Agent Magazine years ago. Um, you know, Mandy Purcell was running that. Now she's running the commercial version. But, um, you know, and then they had a, a nomination process, and then you had a selection committee process so that, you know, people really who deserved to be there were the ones that were recognized. Um, and, and if you guys go to, you know, uh, Top Agent Magazine and you take a look in there, you're going to see some really, you know, top hitters. I mean, all the people that are, you know, on your HGTV stations, you know, uh, some of your local uh, superstars here in the Valley. Valley, you know, in, in the Southwest version. Well, you know, well, we're now a superstar. You know, we were just awarded the top company of the year for 2015, and I think that is huge. Some of you guys might have gotten an email from a person by the name of Melissa uh, uh, Jordan, Jordan, yeah, something like that. Anyway, um, Giordano, that's it, Melissa Giordano. And um, you know, and and there is a small fee if you guys want to participate for your own stuff. But uh, as I've been telling a couple of the teams, uh, you know, there's only a couple of spots left. But as I was telling the teams. Uh, you know that that uh, wanted to participate. This is a great idea to build your material. Not only to be able to say to your client when you go on that listing interview that you know you're you were featured in Top Agent Magazine, uh, but also the fact that your company was as the you know 2015 Company of the Year. And this is a huge piece uh, for you to be able to help in, in your uh, market your business. So uh, if you haven't seen that, if you want more information, uh, go to webinar at westusa.com and, and ask us for more. But uh, you know we we do have a few spots we have left to fill before we can run to production so please give us a call yay thanks for bringing yeah. that up matt thanks you got it did Thank i go you. through all your slides you did okay cool have a good day <laughs> you can run You're out of here matt those, da those. dale's up next dale dale so i had dale come in my office this morning to explain to me what cfpb means and i'm so glad that he took a couple minutes because now i'm even more confused. center for peanut butter and jelly <laughs> So I, I can't I can't wait to hear what Dale does have to share with us about the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Good morning, yeah, Dale. He's trying to get that, into uh, his Dodd seat. Frank Act. You know, it, it's kind of funny. Everybody says Frank Dodd because usually you think of a first Frank, name comes yeah. first. It's actually the opposite. Dodd Frank Frank Dodd. Yeah, Dale. Good is, morning. This is exciting. I'd rather hear about interest rates being low. Yeah. That's even better, Matt. So thank you for that. And those are pretty sharp sharp shoes you got. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, a lot more exciting than this information about the Consumer well, we'll make it exciting. Financial yes. Protection Bureau. Way to go. Um, probably the best way to say this to you is that it's the new financial strength arm. It's the new, uh, new sheriff in town. They are now going to be coming after RESPA violations. They are centered out from the Federal Bureau, and that's the whole issue. That becomes the real scary thing about this. We've always known that there's RESPA rules. It goes for 120-some pages, I think, in detail. But we've never had to worry about it till now. And so effective right now going, and big time August 1 is the announcement time, uh, we're going to see the famous HUD-1 go away. It's going to become a three-page form. This is the government's answer, Patty, to uh, simplifying things. Oh, they go from a one-page form to a three-page form to make it more simple. So with RESPA violations, we have a panic that's existing in the uh, industry with the title companies, with the escrow companies, with the lenders, and now the agents need to be aware as well. Uh, one simple example, if you have a flyer that you've promoted and you've got the name of your lender or your title company on the bottom of the page with their thanks for sponsoring this, they're now going to be looking at the percentage of the size of that ad. If it's 75% you promoting a home or yourself and 25% is title and lender, they are wanting to see a receipt that you paid for 75% of that advertising. Wow. So that kind of sets the pace for what we're talking about. I'm wondering if there's going to be a bunch of questions. I have some more details here. I was privileged to be a part of um, a sponsored event by lenders and titles mm -hmm. <laughs> and attorneys and different people that invite the top 25 brokers to a luncheon. We meet about every two months or every three months. And they brought in a guest speaker who was the national president this year of the escrow services out of Washington, D.C., 
And he gave us a real insight into this uh, whole situation as it relates to uh, as it relates to this whole matter of the CFPB, including articles that I'm holding up here in Radio Land. Can all of you see that out there in Radio Land? <laughs> yeah, if they can. Uh, the boring. CFPB takes action against Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan Chase for illegal mortgage kickbacks. And they were fined $35.7 million after they traded illegally. And uh, this guest speaker that we had pointed out that the American Express has been sued $220, or $220 million for these three items. Number one, age discrimination. Two, advertising. And three, consumer complaints. <laughs> so this new sheriff in town has occupied a Phoenix location in the same building where our legal counsel, uh, Rick Mack, resides at 3300 North Central. He says they think they're on the 14th floor. They don't know <laughs> it, but it's really the 13th floor. <laughs> so that's lucky for us, I guess. But uh, I was impressed to learn from our guest speaker that there's one office in Washington, D.C. that houses this organization, and they've moved to three different locations over the last year. But they chose to place one other building in the United States, and they chose Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So Phoenix is the only place where they are in, other re than. in residing other than D.C. Wow. So I think perhaps because uh, of our border crossing and the immigration issue and real estate being so strong and Arizona being so well-known in the National Association of Realtors, we seem to be doing better and more complete re transactions than others. We have a diverse uh, multicultural organizational group of people in our state, and I think they're singling us out to, um, to come after us, if you will. So uh, sections 8 and 9 of RESPA are the main thing, uh, and I suppose I need to say the big thing that we need to watch is full disclosure and that consumers must be given a choice, and agents those of you listening, I want you to know that it needs to be in writing. We've always done everything verbally, but we now put it in writing. Here's the lenders that you might want to consider. Lender A, B, C, we've had good results with those. And, of course, you may choose a lender of your own choosing. Mm -hmm. Here's the title company we recommend. But we also have a second one we recommend and perhaps a third one. And, of course, you can choose your own. Check your yellow pages. They're giving special emphasis to the, the MSAs, the, mar the marketing uh, service, uh, agreements. service agreements, and they're wanting big-time disclosure on that. In fact, NAR just published an article that you might want to check at the NAR site concerning the disclosure on the marketing servicing agreements. So it's a new day, and uh, the big key phrase that they're talking about is UDAP, they're big on initials, the Unfair Deceptive Abusive Practices the unfair, deceptive, abusive practices. So we are going to have to be real careful regarding our advertising, regarding our disclosure, regarding our written choices of consumers given the choices. We have to do it effectively more than we've ever done it before because now they are going to be fining severely and the penalties are going to be uh, noticeable. You know, one of the things, Dale, that also is uh – you mentioned at one point a while back uh, that the it's not so much just the title company who under RESPA might be in trouble for providing, say, some agent uh, uh, marketing materials that aren't necessarily marketing the title company. They're really marketing the agent, and and you have the and, and an agent has the title company produce that information for them uh, at, at no fees. Say, for instance. Uh, it, the the, t the title company is in trouble under RESPA, but more importantly, if the agent uses it, the agent's in trouble. And I think the thing like uh, kind of like that uh, uh, that that uh, the money we used to spend, you know, if you gave somebody uh, tickets for referring a client to you, you know, which is wrong, right? Because you're not supposed to pay for for leads. But if in the event you gave somebody tickets, your act of giving it to them at, at least years ago was a misdemeanor, but the fact that the client used it. The client committed a felony using it, so it was really weird. But it, it, are you going to see? I mean, does an agent have to be careful when now that they're receiving information too, and then and then using it, and knowing that this is out there? Is it maybe that's a little too too uh, uh, concerning at this point? 
I just think that we're going to have to document everything, Todd, as bad as that is. It's just the reality that we can no longer say you have to use my lender, you have to use my title company, because you'll be in trouble. And we all like our <laughs> chosen title companies. We all like our chosen lenders because they give great service. That's why we like them. It's nothing that's wrong with us liking those people because they've given us good service. But we have to give the choices to the consumer, and we have to do it in writing. That's the key underlining score story I want to keep presenting today. Yeah, and, and do you think that using, uh, if the title company provides you with marketing material, you have a problem? I think that that's back to the percentages of cost just, and so just on. Just stay, so within, that stay within that cost okay. thing. Good. You know, I think it's more on the advertising than it is for them giving us information, which yeah. market, they're marketing to us to come to them, just like we market to the consumers to use our services. I don't see that as a major issue. I think we can take their swat, fly swatters and we can use their yardsticks and we can use their tape measures and things like that without any problem. So we can still go to the title company and ask them to produce our mar our our own personal marketing materials. That's that's not a big deal as long as it's percentage wise. Percentage wise I think will be the key issue. Cool. So a lot of times in the uh, listings we see get must get pre qualified by so and so prior to they may not need to use that lender but how do you think that's going to come into play here is stop I those think agents that, that are doing that should stop you think you raise a good point Patty I would say we we've had good luck with lender so and so and we recommend he's good but of course as a consumer you may choose one of your own choosing right. and make some other declaratory statement of that within nature that listing. within that that way we haven't said, oh, you have to use this particular right. lender. You have to use this particular. We had, you know, we had Matt here this morning. Well, there's other lenders that will be here too. Right. But there's also others out there available, and, of course, those are available to the consumers, and we're here to help the consumers get the ones that they want. I think it's real important as agents too because we get uh, solicited by vendors all the time, people that want to build our websites, sell us leads, and they all are pushing us to get money from our lender and our title partners. Just they're, they're totally not in the loop on what's going on. So as agents, we got to be really careful about that because just because they say go do it doesn't mean it's right and that they're allowed, they're allowed to do it. You know, real estate agents are pretty well tuned to this because of fair housing. I mean, for years and years, we've been aware of fair housing, and we don't see many fair housing issues. It usually comes from the complaint. And right. when the complaint goes to the attorney general and they follow it up and they, they come after, that's where you're going to have issues. And I think that a lot of this may very well come from a consumer that will make the complaint now to the uh, to this particular group of this uh, CFPB. So get used to the four letters. The CFPB PB. is here for us. Don't come and up with any, any away. reason. Yeah. And then August 1 is the target date. Okay, so we got a couple questions on this. You got a second to oh, answer. Okay, okay. Sure. Uh, Somebody asked, what about list or sister discounts from title company? Can we still use those? Again, it's a matter of disclosure. Okay. Uh, what uh, Will that also be for new homes? No, new homes are excluded. Good. New homes are excluded, believe it or not. All right. Yeah. Uh, how do you say I won't work with you if you use B of A? I'm not quite sure what that question meant, but uh, it sounds like somebody's trying to say you have to use a lender. Well, if so. the consumer says they won't work with us if we use B of A, I guess they, they can't get into where I choose to do my own personal banking, yeah. but I don't think they have a right to do that. Right, right. And, you know, it's kind of ironic. We have no place to complain about consumers. It would seem to me that we ought to fix a group that where we can complain about the consumers right, that exactly. complain about us, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest thing from CFPB, at least from uh, Dodd-Frank, uh, from what it says, is that they don't want us to, li uh, to limit the consumer's choice. That's yeah. really what right. it boils down to. Yeah, that's it. The consumer is the king, and they're in charge, and they're in control, and we cannot be steering them or directing them, and we can't do it verbally anymore. That's going to be a big change for agents, and we've hammered this and hammered this for years. Bob and I have talked about it all through the years about mm -hmm. the verbal is always the way real estate agents perform, and they're going to have to learn to put it in writing. Mm -hmm. Because you can't protect anything. Actually, out at the Arrowhead meeting last week, I talked about all of this, and uh, Patty Borton said to me, she says, I, I just send them an email and give them six or eight with phone numbers and everything. That way I've got it documented that I told them, here's a bunch of people you might want to use. Mm -hmm. that's, so an excellent, that was good. that's an excellent way to handle it. I have a procedure form that I use, and these are the people I've had great success with. And, of course, you're welcome to choose others of your own 
suggestions and your own needs and so forth. Dale, is there a website we can go to to do some our own research on this subject? Well, AAR is pr producing some stuff right now. So the AAR online is a site, and mm -hmm. NAR is <clears throat> writing articles, and they're making it known nationally. <clears throat> so it's not just it's not just in Arizona, but of course that's where we live, and that's where they sent their one extra new building outside of D.C. <laughs> so I think that we better pay better attention than perhaps the other 49 states. I think that we're probably the targeted state. Yeah, they're being watching us. So you have some info for us too on seller finance issues. You're just a barrel of fun oh, this morning. Oh yeah, this is <laughs> this is great. I get to do all the fun stuff here, you know. Uh, but I am going to be at the awards banquet, so that'll that'll take some some edge there. Uh, there are three basic forms on seller financing. Uh, I'm trying to summarize it down for agents to understand that the uh, number one, we'd prefer you not do seller financing. Let's just be right straight out front with that. that. Uh, it's more complicated and it's got more whiskers on it. There's more potential for you. If you're dealing with a regular lender, then everything is pretty well structured for us. But sellers are always individually different. And uh, if one seller sells within a 12-month period, a single-family residential home, they can sell one in 12 months. If they do more than that, then there's a major violation, so that's going to be perhaps a lawsuit in the making. But if you sell one in 12 months, the seller is the finance. He provides the money. He gives the, the equity to his property in, a, in the form of a loan. The good news is that it can be ballooned. There can be a balloon payment on that. You can sched schedule it for like a 30-year schedule and balloon it in two years if you want to or 10 years if you want to. The one restriction on that particular one, which is the best one of all three of them, is the fact that you uh, do have to have a fixed interest rate for five years. Mm -hmm. So that's the one in 12. The other one is three in 12, and that can be done with an individual or with a LLC or a partnership or any other kind of uh, trust or what have you. But you can do three of those, but here's the problem with that one. You must be pre-qualified with a lender. I do not want any agent ever doing the pre-qualifying. In fact, we will not accept it at West USA unless you have that loan, that buyer, qualified with a lender. And secondly, I want it done with an attorney. So that particular one is deadly as far as I'm concerned, and it's one that I would never advise you to do. But if you're going to do it, it has to have an, a mortgage lender qualifying the buyer. has to be drafted by an attorney. And the third form is more for land and consumer uh, just regular stuff that's not a residential home, if you will. Those forms supplied by the seller then when the, when the contracts are coming across? All or? the forms are available. We have the forms. They're available through our state association. Well, who, who's responsible for? You can get those down line on zip forms. Who's responsible for filling it out then? Is well, it, it'll be an agent that's involved with the sale. For the yeah. seller? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the agent can fill these in. What if the info is not accurate? Is it, is, will buyer be liable? Well, that remains to be seen, I guess, in the court. So it's not something that you want to mess with. No. I would avoid it if all possible. Yeah. But it's available, and we have to make our agents aware it's available, but not highly recommended. So okay. that pretty well sums that one up, I hope. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, there's just so much to continue to keep learning on all, all this stuff every day. Really quick, I want to just go back, uh, go back really quick on the uh, CF. PB form, uh, just or the uh, information. We did have a question about land. Does it apply to land too? The CFPB? Yeah. It applies to sales. It says yeah. commercial transactions? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. The, the consumers have to be protected. That's okay. what they're talking about. They're okay. protecting the consumers. The, the only exception I know are new homes. Okay. That's the only exception they talked about at this meeting. All right. New homes. Yeah. It was great. Anything else? No, right. No well, unless questions? you have more, then well, I'm kind of I'm stick around because we might get more. There's a ton of ton of stuff to talk about on this issue. So okay. Unless well, you have to be somewhere. Well, so. no, I I I might <laughs> hitchhike on time to talk to you about the changes that are happening in Armos too. 
Um, you, have to, you have to get permission from Bob because we're starting to get in his time, but go for it. Well, just basically to remind everybody that August 1 is a critical time for this CFPB. That's where it's going to happen, mm -hmm. and the, the uh, HUD-1 is going to be a major, major change. So uh, the, toward September, August, September, they're going to be switching out the lockboxes, and those will be traded one for one. And it's kind of interesting that we have 166,000 lockboxes out in the hands and the possession of our agents, but only uh, uh, 84,000 of them are being used. So the mm -hmm. rest of them are probably in the trunk of your car or your or closet or in your garage. Cut off by the gas, somewhere. Southwest gas. But they will trade those one for one, so there's a, an even exchange that will be coming. So watch watch for the announcements that are coming in those particular directions. So uh, just wanted to mention that. So we got August 1 coming with CFPB. And we got the lockbox exchange coming this fall, too. So. What was the reason for the lockbox change? Do you know? Uh, I don't know why this particular at this time. There's mm. new, later technology that's made them a little more expensive and more bells and whistles. So they're not going to charge if I have an old one? No. No, Just, they'll take it. Oh, trade okay. it. They'll trade it. Hmm. You have to prove ownership, probably, to be prove able to ownership, do that. Prove ownership. That's okay. the main thing. Yeah. Yeah, bring your box. We'll give you a new one. Take your old one. Hmm. Yeah. When, I'm sorry. When can we start doing that? Do you know? I think the end of August or okay. September is what they have in mind. Oh, boy. Well, we got to get on that for the people that are getting doing a lot of listings. So, mm -hmm. Thanks, Dale. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'll stay around. I want to hear what Bob's got to say. I, I hope it's good. Bob, what's happening? <laughs> As a matter of fact, you can help me with this. <laughs> you know, we were talking about awards and everything and how long we've been around here. Yeah. You know, I, I've been around here a long time. I, I go back to when Clay went out and bought all the computers from Western Savings. Do you recall that? When I've he, heard of Western Savings, Bob, uh, so I don't Lincoln, recall when he bought them. Uh, That's when Charles, whatever his name was. Uh, Keating. Keating, yeah, got nailed way back in those days. And finally they divested themselves of all stuff, and the computers were as big as this table unbelievable size in those computers and he put them in all of his offices and those huge computers um here's here's one that came out in the paper chris combs this is on sunday dual agent must fairly represent home's value here's a couple of people that uh, decided to move to mesa and they contacted a real estate agent recommended by the husband's sister, and they came here to buy their retirement home. The real estate agent only showed us three homes, which were all listed by that real estate agent that was recommended. Oh. Uh-huh. Now, they were all listed by them. One home they really liked, so they signed a form that said the real estate agent represented both us and the seller of the home. Oh, why did, did they do that? They, they didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. But why would he want to be a dual agent here? And as they went along, those that read this, uh, re remember what it said, they talked to, after they closed, they talked to several of the neighbors that said their home was worth more than, worth no more than 250000 even though they paid 310000 for it. Oh, yeah. 60,000 overpay they're saying do they have a claim against anybody here well probably <laughs> yeah did they do an appraisal or were they cash buyers on that did they We're say cash any buyers yeah. yeah i believe it was yeah it was i, I believe it's cash buyer so the real estate agent, a dual agent, as Chris says, representing both you and the seller, the real estate agent still had a duty to fairly and properly represent you. If they negligently or fraudulently misrepresented the value of your home to you, you should have a claim against the real estate agent for damages for this misrepresentation. And, you know, and that's what bothers both of us a lot. And a lot of times, you guys... Some of the agents out there will have a listing, and if they find a buyer, they believe that they are dual agents. No, not necessarily, unless you have chosen to be a dual agent, and the buyer has uh, come in with you on that situation. 
But why be a dual agent? Why not just represent the seller and not represent the buyer? You'll do a fair job, won't you? Most everybody does out there. Yeah, it's amazing how many agents don't understand that you do not have to become a dual agent. There are some companies that force their agents to become dual agents, but West USA is not one of those companies. No, we can represent only one party if if the situation is there, and it's okay if we represent both sides as long as there's a need to do so. But it's not dictated that you must. It's very hard to be a dual agent and uh, represent both parties. It, it's There's always something, like Gilda Radner said, there's always something right. and <laughs> I, uh, that will get messed up around there, and one or the other. Yeah. I'm a big advocate of doing a referral out on that buyer if I had a listing, because that way I could make a referral fee, right, and not have to represent the buyer. If That's correct. That, yes, right? you, you could be uh, representing the seller and then refer out the buyer to another agent and mm-hmm. collect a referral fee. Mm-hmm. Now, the, mm-hmm. referral I like that idea. Are, the referral fees are not disclosed on the HUD-1, mm-hmm. and they are maintained confidentially on the backside. Mm-hmm. So that's not a problem at all. It's a good one. Good good way to handle it. What else, Bob? I had a call this morning. First call came in. Uh, one of the gals called up and says, uh, that my, my buyer wants to cancel the deal they're in right now. They don't want the house. They just want to cancel it. They know they're going to lose their earnest money, and they're okay with that. What shall I do, Bob? I said, well, call the title company and have them fill out the mutual cancellation, and uh, we'll get into it right there. Uh, and it will state that the, the the seller will get the earnest money on that mutual cancellation. If, and this is the part she didn't know, I says, if indeed the seller will agree to this and not sue your buyer. Oh, they can do that? The agent says to me, yes, they have some options here, and they don't have to accept the earnest money. What if it's a very short amount of earnest money, 500, 1,000, and they, they were already, they've already hired a truck to move them and all this stuff that people do. So it, it's kind of hard to cancel a situation uh, unless it's just going to work out okay, I, I don't know. Maybe they'll say we didn't get enough for our house anyway, so this is good. We'll take the 1000 or two or whatever it is and go on about our business. But hopefully they'll get a mutual cancellation from the title company and get the thing done. Mm-hmm. So that was the first uh, call I got this morning, Dale. Well, my first call this morning was uh, we're on the buyer side of this transaction, $600,000 sale. And the buyer has decided he wants to switch to pay cash. And the seller is yelling and screaming and demanding that they put in more earnest money and that they cannot do this and he's not going to allow it. Well, the contract already allows for it. Well, yeah. The contract says there's three rules. Number one, I can change to a loan program that doesn't cause me to be disqualified. So if I go to cash, I probably won't be disqualified. Number two, is it going to cost the seller more money? No. Mm -mm. There's no more cost for the seller. And the third one is, can you do it before uh, the established credit, the close of escrow date? And the agent said, no, we can still close it on time. So I said, then let him yell and scream, but he cannot stop it, and he cannot demand more earnest money. It's already in the contract. It's already in the contract. I'm racking my brain to try to understand why the seller would be upset about this. I have no idea. I don't represent the seller, but I do know that our agent lives next door to the broker, and the broker has called, and the seller has called, and I told my agent, I said, well, talk to the broker if you want to. She said, well, he's nice, he's friendly, but just simply say, you talk to your broker, and we're within our rights to let our buyer make this change as long as they don't violate those three rules of being Jeez. denied. Don't cost the seller more money. Find the seller, I'd say, i got another list. house to sell you. We got any more cash? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So well, it was an actually a lot home. of people don't understand this, but all houses sell for cash. Yeah, you may go borrow the cash, but they all get sold for cash, and you get uh, sold out right there. You get all the money at the end. So what right. difference does it make where it came from? Mm-hmm. Whoa! Did you see the newspaper yesterday? My goodness, it was all about home values, Valley mm-hmm. home values. It's it's just full of stuff. Here's a complete issue here. Home values 
from Arizona Central, Southeast Valley, every everything <coughs> is in here. This is something to see. Matter of fact, um, she, uh, this one fellow talks about singles, millennials, and dinks. I haven't heard the term dinks for a long time. Have you? I haven't for a long time. We yeah. used to talk about it all the time. I don't know what it is. Well, that's a dual income, no kids. Oh. <laughs> Wow, that means they got a lot of money and they want to buy a house. And sometimes, and it says right here, they want to buy them over towards ASU and places like that. No kids, and they're they're buying a house. And they, you know, <laughs> I haven't heard that term in years. But Catherine Rieger wrote up all this stuff. It just goes on and on and on. A great issue yesterday, Catherine. I know you're sitting here watching this. Well, we real estate people love the fact that the market uh, has the inventory shrinking. It means that we should be able to get more listings. We got buyers that are willing to buy. Uh, Matt gave wonderful news earlier this morning in this in the webinar where he says that the interest rates are 3.75 on FHA and 3.85 yeah. conventional. I mean, a great time to buy. It's a great time to sell. So uh, just go out there and get some business. Right. And in past years, it always slowed down when you got past 9.5%. 10%, the market would slow down. But look where it's at now. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. It, it ought to be great. Now, here, here's, a, here's another one I want to warn you about. Uh, uh, don't put lock boxes on, uh, on houses that have tenants in them. Well, they could sign off and say it's okay, but, you know, that's too much liability there. And uh, the lawyers and everybody have rethought the idea about a lockbox with a tenant. You got still got to give them a 48-hour notice to go show it. You can't just walk up and open up the lockbox and do it. So... Bob, had I've had a rash of calls about tenants in the lockbox situation. It's it just, is. yeah, it's opened up somehow. Uh, the 48-hour notice has to be observed. I've even suggested to people that they uh, sell them like we used to in the old days with fourplexes. You write the contract, get it accepted before you ever show the property. Right. So write the offer, get it accepted, meet the terms, and then set the 48-hour notice. Then go look at it and begin your 10-day inspection. And you can deny and cancel if you want to. But don't bother the tenants because most of them don't want a new owner. Mm -hmm. That's why you're going to have problems with it. We yeah. had one this this uh, Thursday or Friday, maybe it was over the weekend, I had a call where the tenant said the owner had to be present when the house was shown. So they're pushing the owner to be there to allow the showing with the 48-hour notice. The owner to be there? Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just more difficult more and more with the tenants and the properties. Well, this one that I have here as a real estate agent managing the property, and she was getting a little edgy there because – one of our people got the listing on the property, and she was getting after me. So <laughs> maybe we were talking to the same person. No, it's a different person on that one. I didn't have yeah. the other agent doing the property management. Mm -hmm. And then I got a call from Jennifer this past week here. She says uh, Remax is sending over their mold addendum, and they're hollering for me to get it signed by my client. Do I have to do that, Bob? She says, I already know the answer, but I want to check with you anyway. <laughs> I said, no, you don't have to do that. We already furnish them a mold addendum. We have it signed. I mean, don't don't set it up for the other broker to get a mold addendum or any of those uh, things. We take care of those things don't we, when we work over here. So, no, don't do that. She said, I knew that's what you're going to tell me. So, And another fellow really mad as hell. He didn't get a a home warranty on a property. It said so in the MLS, but he didn't write it into the contract. And he's an agent. Now, th this agent says, well, I didn't write it in a contract, and, and everybody knows they should have got this home warranty, Bob, and blah, 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 on and on about it. But you got to write it in the contract if you want it. So he did a little commissionectomy and made up for it for his uh, – Meyer, so that's the way that worked out. Get it in writing seems to be the theme. One yes. more and more the theme. <laughs> well, oh, we're Bob, at we're at eleven o'clock. Wow, we could have gone on for hours. 
Well, I was having a great time listening to that. Just to follow up on a couple questions really quick before we hang up is that uh, get back on the referral within West USA. Can you have another agent within West USA do a referral or to give a referral to of a buyer, for instance, if you've you're, got the listing? You're talking about that dual agency Yeah, we're going back to that early. question again. So, yeah, yeah, just I, making if sure I have, our broker if I have the, the listing. And somebody, let's just use an example. If somebody walks into my open house, it's my listing. I'm holding it open. And they want me to write the contract, and I'm nervous about that. Well, first of all, you can write the contract and represent the seller only. But if you'd rather want, and this buyer wants another agent, you can refer it to another West USA agent. They can write it. They can represent. And then you can get a referral fee for giving that referral. Now, please know we still got a dual agency. Right because it's in two people rather than in just one person. So the listing agent is under my license, the buyer's agent is under my license, so it's still a dual agency, but it's in two people, and it feels different than it being in one person. Right, and it doesn't matter if they're in another West USA office that's owned by corporate. So that's same correct. Thing. Okay, awesome. All right, everybody, like us on Facebook, and uh, we will then uh, finish up with the quote of the day. If you focus on results, you will never change. If you focus on change, you will get results. I hope everyone has a wonderful week. Thanks for joining us today, everybody, and uh, we look forward to talking to you on Tuesday next week. That's Tuesday. Don't forget. See you then. Have a we great day. We shan't forget that, my dear. <laughs>